And welcome in. You are watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men accused of murder in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery, we know, was shot and killed back in February of 2020 in the Satilla Shores neighborhood. Leading us to where we are now, three men on trial again for murder. We are in the jury selection process at this point, day seven, week two, as things slowly inch closer towards getting the 12 jurors needed as well as four alternates. Right now we have 36 seated in the pool, a pool of 36 potential jurors. They're aiming to get to 64 before the next round of questioning. And joining us this morning is Father Tom Purdy with Glenn Clergy. Um, the, he is here this morning to, to give us some insight into what's happening there in Glynn County right now, the mood overall. Now, Father Tom, we know that you are there to pretty much set the tone of peace throughout all of this because there are demonstrations going on. They've been there since last week when things even started and folks are showing up every day again peacefully to demonstrate for justice. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So give us some insight into what things are like at this point because you've been out there pretty much every day. Yeah, I haven't been out as much this week. I was there briefly Monday and yesterday. I will say this week is quieter than last week. Mm -hmm. um, the, the group of demonstrators that were there last week did return to their homes all across the country. Um, but there are still family members and locals who are coming by the courthouse grounds and uh, checking things out, um, chatting with folks who are there. And so there's, there's still people around keeping an eye on, on what's going on. And certainly members of Maude's family are there every day waiting uh, to see family as they come and go from the courthouse and just be there as a, a presence for, for everybody. Have you been in contact with members of Maude's Arbery's family? Yeah, I've, I've met some of the aunts that are there. Uh, I've, I've been nearby as his parents have come and gone, but not uh, spoken to them individually. Some of the others in our group have had more substantial conversations with them and have got to know them. Mm -hmm. um, the aunts asked, for example, that a member of our group be there each morning if we can to pray with them to start off the day. And so there's been people that have been able to do that who can get there first thing in the morning mm -hmm. uh, before the day really gets going. Uh, so, yeah. You mentioned praying with people. I want to talk a little bit about the purpose of Glenn Clergy for Equity, why you guys decided to form this group, because we're talking about um, different clergymen from all over Glenn County coming together for a purpose. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think you have to go back. This group wasn't formed specifically around uh, the trial, but it was formed as a result of Ahmad's death. Um, and when that happened, there were a lot of clergy who recognized that there's a, a moment that we needed to be able to address out of our faith traditions and out of the depth of those traditions because we needed as individuals and recognized our community needs it. Um, with what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I find that um, folks are more receptive to hearing messages of the gospel of peace and justice when they're experiencing um, moments that are life-changing. So baptisms, weddings, funerals, those all seem to be times when people's walls drop a little bit, uh, whether it's great joy or great tragedy, people are receptive to hearing things. Um, that moment, uh, we realized right away, was, was upon us in Glynn County. Unfortunately, it came at the hands of a tragedy. Um, and I think we recognized that there were a lot of emotions when the news finally was able to clarify what had happened to Ahmad and how horrible it was. Uh, there were people that were shocked, people that weren't surprised. Everybody was upset about it. And we said, okay, what can we do? Um, and so those of us who already had some relationships started branching out. We started coming together and building relationships informally and then formally doing some work around uh, racial healing and learning from each other, hearing each other's stories, sharing each other's stories with each other. Um, and as the trial approached, we, we talked about how we could be intentional about that. And that's where we decided, okay, we can just be present. Uh, we can continue this conversation, continue this strive for justice. Uh, you know, we do not want to see any sense of uh, remaining uh, racism or white supremacy in the community. Not that it's loud here in Glynn County, but I think we know it's in every county to a certain degree. And so our presence is about showing a different way of being a community and being in relationship with one another. We stand at the courthouse. We have a tent that we set up most days. We've got some signs that say we're there for prayer. We talk to anybody and everybody who's there just to say, how are you doing? You know, do you need a bottle of water? Um, what are you thinking? Uh, some people do ask for prayer. Uh, many don't, but they're just happy to talk. Uh, we've realized there's ministry to be done with media. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've 
talked with folks in, in your line of work over the last two weeks. And we're there just to remind people that this has always been a community that has been uh, united in this call for justice. Uh, it was remarkable in 2020 when the news broke just how wide the support was for justice and getting the right thing to happen, which was to get the men who killed Ahmad Arbery and were responsible for his death arrested so that the justice system could do what it needed. And as you know, that didn't happen initially. Uh, it, it took the video, it took people coming out to the courthouse and other rallies for that really to happen. And now we just wanna continue that effort of bringing people together, uh, being a presence that stands for justice and um, helping our community thrive as it, as it has tried to do. If you're just now joining us, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men charged with murder in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery. Joining us this morning is Father Tom Purdy with Glenn Clergy for Equity, a group that has been out there since the beginning of this jury selection process, and they plan to be out there throughout the duration of the trial just to set the tone for people as we see demonstrators, protesters out there on a daily basis. They want things to remain peaceful, which they have overall. Things in, as, really have died down down pretty much this week. We're sure it'll pick right back up as the trial begins. And that, by the way, is set to happen next week. We know in the jury selection process, we are now up to a pool of 36 potential jurors. We did hear the judge say that they, he is aiming to get 64 potential jurors in that pool to choose from to ultimately get an impartial jury of 12 people with four alternates. We are slowly but surely getting there. Now, Father Tom, I've got to ask you this because you are getting insight unlike most. You are hearing people's intimate thoughts, concerns. What can you share with us about people, their mindsets right now in the Brunswick area surrounding this trial? A lot of folks that I've talked to, I think, are cautiously optimistic. Many people, as we're finding out with the jury selection process, have already made up their mind about what they think the outcome should be. And, and a lot of the folks that we've met do think that um, these men have at least committed a felony murder and that uh, they need to be held accountable for that. Um, I met a gentleman last week who was from out of town. Uh, he's from out west. Uh, he, he, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the demonstrators that were there and, and how uncomfortable he was with their, their level of chanting and some of the things they were chanting. And I, I was wondering where this was going to go. And ultimately, I was a little surprised because he then turned the corner and said, yeah, but I think these guys need to be held accountable. What they did was wrong. And um, I'm hopeful. And, and that hope has been what we've all been expressing. We recognize that it's in the hands of the justice system now. Um, it is it, in every community a flawed system. Uh, and so we, we have ideas about what's right uh, and what should happen, but it's gonna be up to these 12 jurors and the judge uh, to actually determine what the outcome will be. I think folks are, um, are Sensing the community as a whole is together on this. Uh, we have not seen great divisions in our in our county uh, over the last year and a half around this issue. It's it's been fairly solid, and I think that is helping people too have a sense that no matter what comes at the end of this trial, this community is poised to handle it and to continue to grow together afterwards. That's interesting you're saying there, you're not seeing division within the, the county because that's something that outsiders would assume there is because obviously there are, are different mindsets. There has to be within this county because of we saw what happened with this young man losing his life. So it's interesting to hear you say that you're not seeing great division within the county. A good thing, but still interesting. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there is division and I'm sure there are folks who are, are thinking that the, these men do not deserve to be sent to prison or stay in prison, um, but it's not a large group. And I've been pleasantly surprised by the diversity of the group that has called for justice last year uh, and continued this year. Um, I don't think anybody's being um, particularly nasty or negative about the process or the people who have different opinions, um, but it has not surfaced as an issue in our community thus far in a major way, the way that I think people would have expected uh, you know, of a, a southern town, um, you know, that, that does carry some stigma in other parts of the country. And it's been um, refreshing to see that, that that's not really been the truth. This has been a community that has not had to worry about division and violence. Uh, you know, we keep hearing people talk about their concern. And so far, the only violence associated with this whole endeavor is the violence that was committed against Ahmad. Um, there has not been anything else that has come out of this uh, that would rate that kind of concern. 
But I think some of that concern is being placed upon us from outside Glynn County, people who have seen other places in the country and what's happened. And all I can say is we're not those places and we're not those communities. And we're hopeful that all the relationship building we've done will bear fruit. Let's get a quick check of your time right now. It is 8 11 on this Wednesday morning, October 27th. If you're just now joining us online, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men who are charged with murder in the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery there in Brunswick, Georgia. And joining us this morning is um, Father Tom Purdy with Glenn Clergy for Equity there in, in Glenn County. Uh, Father Purdy, I know a lot of people are very appreciative of what the Glenn Clergy is doing, this group of about 50 clergymen who have decided to come together um, to set the tone again out there ahead of this trial taking place. Right now we're in jury selection, which is a process that's moving slowly, but it is moving. Um, they're actually aiming for Friday to actually wrap all of this up in terms of seating a jury. We shall wait to see if that will actually happen. And then the trial obviously would start next week. That's when we will likely see a lot of things really pick up out there in that uh, area in, in Brunswick. Are you hearing any concerns from people in the in the area there? About the jury selection process? Yes, about things picking up next week. Oh, yeah. Not concerns, no. I think we're aware that it's been quiet during jury selection and will probably pick up a little bit next week and beyond. Uh, certainly as the trial, it, it's indicated that it's winding down. We expect even more activity. Um, not really concerns. I think our group is curious to see who comes. There are some folks we know are very interested in the outcome of what's happening. They're, they want to be very supportive of the community. They recognize this is, could be a long process. You know, we're not exactly sure how long the trial will take. And so some folks have sort of saved their energy and their time and their calendars to wait until things were progressed a little bit more. Right. We do expect more people, though, uh, once the trial is underway, depending on what some of the revelations are in the trial, might cause certain days to be um, better attended than others. But locally, we, we're not really hearing, um, you know, from our group and some of the folks we talked to, a great deal of concern in a, in a bad way. I think our local officials are prepared for whatever comes. Uh, and they've done a good job of, of preparing for whatever may happen, and we're just ready for it. I think it's fairly obvious and, and fair to say that if you walk outside of the courthouse in Glynn County, you will see a lot of the protesters or demonstrators are obviously there in support of the Arbery family. They'll tell you that outright if you talk to them. But I'm curious to know, because you are getting people approaching you, approaching the tent that you guys have out there, the Glynn Kirji, um, approaching for prayer or just sharing their thoughts with you. Have you heard a lot of people come by to say that they're actually in support of not the Arbery family, but the McMichaels or Brian, have you heard anything like that from people? I have not heard that. I'm not aware of that uh, coming to the group as a, somebody's, you know, approach to this and why they're there. Mm -hmm. I will say that in all these conversations, the piece that is a part of this, not in every conversation, but some is people do still pray for the McMichaels and the Brian families and, and, and these three men as well. Mm -hmm. it, they do want justice for a mob. They do want uh, these men to be uh, held accountable for what they feel was wrong, but they recognize that they're human beings and that they have families and that's as tragic for everybody. And so that's been a, a, another one of those refreshing surprises of grace um, that we've heard that echoed from people, that when there is prayer, it's prayer for all involved. Um, we're, we're seeking justice for Ahmad and to make sure that the system does what the system is supposed to do, and it, it's on track to do that now but recognizing that there's other lives that are that are hurt by this, that this is a tragedy in every sense of what a tragedy can be. Uh, Father Tom, what about your, your congregation? Um, please share with us the name of your church, by the way, that out there in uh, Glynn County. And, and tell us about your congregation, what you're hearing from them. Yeah, I serve at Christ Church Frederica on St. Simon's Island. Um, my congregation's a good microcosm of the entire community. Um, we've got, a, you know, a bit of diversity, not uh, racial diversity in my congregation. St. Simons is not a very diverse community. It's one of the bubbles in our county. We've got several different bubbles that people seem to live in. Um, but like the community, our congregation has largely, at least the folks that I've heard from, been supportive of uh, seeking justice, uh, getting these men arrested last year, and letting the justice system figure out what the proper response is. Um, I have not had uh, a lot of pushback for things I've said or, or presence that I've offered um, over the course of this. I know, unfortunately, that's not true for all my colleagues. Uh, there are people who have faced pushback. Um, unfortunately, in today's day and age, anytime you talk about something that's involving race, there is a political element for some folks that overrides every other aspect of the situation. 
Um, that's why I've been I've been pleasantly surprised at how there has been such a diverse political response to this as well. I mean, last year I was part of a group of clergy who were on the courthouse steps uh, calling for justice and for these men to be arrested um, and for the justice system to do its work. And I was up there with the entire political spectrum, the spectrum of business and community leaders, clergy leaders. Um, and that's been pretty consistent uh, here in, in my community as well. Folks, if you're just now joining us, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men accused of murder in the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery there in Brunswick, Georgia. And joining us this morning is Father Tom Purdy with Glen Clergy, a group of about 50 clergymen there in Glen County that have decided to come together to set the tone for this trial um, there in Glen. They were there since the very beginning. I remember last week, Monday, when I was out there, I saw you guys holding hands and, and in prayer, and I said, I, I have to talk to you. What, what's going on? What are you trying to do? And by setting the tone, a lot of people would say that is imperative, so important, because we knew there would be a lot of demonstrators out there. We're seeing things pretty peaceful overall right now and, and hopeful, pray, prayerful that things will remain that way. And that's that's pretty much what you're seeing as well. Yeah, that's what we're seeing. Um, it is It has been very peaceful. Even the demonstrators who were there last week, although they would get loud, mm -hmm. um, they weren't hateful. Uh, they, they weren't being destructive or recommending destruction in any way. You know, as we got to know them and talk to them and hear their stories, they were here to, to seek justice uh, for Ahmad and stand with his family and be, be a support system for them. And I think they have done that. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's definitely been um, a, a peaceful mm -hmm. vibe that is community uh, at its core. It's now 18 minutes past the hour. Court is set to start at about 8.30 this morning as the jury selection process continues. We're in week two right now, day seven of that process. Right now, there has been a pool of 36 potential jurors chosen. The aim is to get 64 people, 64 potential jurors together. From that pool of 64, they plan to whittle things down, continue to question these people until they get to 12 impartial jurors seated and four alternates from there. Once we get to that point, then the trial will actually begin. That's something that a lot of people there in Brunswick, really not just Brunswick, not just Glen County, but across the nation, a lot of people have been eager to see what will happen in the end. Everyone wants to see their version of justice uh, happen in the end. Um, Pastor T T Father Tom, you mentioned folks saving their energy, not coming out there this week so much, but possibly next week when things get started. How about you personally? Have you been back out there this week? What are your plans. Yeah, I was out briefly Monday and Tuesday, Monday because I had another reason to be at the courthouse and I was able to visit with some folks while I was there yesterday just to check how it was going. It was very quiet yesterday afternoon. Um, I'm able to go out when my schedule allows. I still have my, my congregational ministry that we're trying to do and so I'm squeezing it into that. Normally Mondays are my day off and I've spent most of Monday there last week and my plan is for next week to do the same. Um, we have a sign up sheet that our group uses to try to get shifts to come out. Uh, we have not put up our tent this week, but we brought our water bottles and we uh, we created a sticker that invites people to um, remember that we're in this together and we'll hand those out and, and talk to folks. So next week, I think it will, uh, as more people come, we'll use our communication tools to let the group know that there's more folks. And I suspect that many folks who have not yet carved time out of their schedule to be there will make it more of a priority as the trial goes on. And, and I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll be there as much as I can and as much as I'm needed. I'm sure many would argue your presence will be needed next week as more people show up. Um, just initially, before things even started, I remember going out there to Brunswick, talking to people in the area, and a lot of folks say their main concern, not Glen County, not the residents there, but they were concerned about outsiders coming in and, and perhaps causing trouble in the area. But again, you guys were there to set the tone. So again, people would argue that you need to continue to be there uh, to continue to set that tone and, and make sure things remain um, peaceful and calm. We're, we're hoping so. Um, I yeah. want to get your, your, your opinion about the, the process so far and how things are going. I'm not sure how much you can get into things, but again, we've heard frustration. You've spoken with some of Arbery's aunts, and some of them say they're frustrated with how slow the process is going, but you speak with anyone within the justice system, they'll tell you that's just how things go sometimes. They have to do what they can to get to an impartial jury. And your thoughts on that, sir? Well, I don't think it's a surprise, really, that it's going slowly, especially here. I think people were immediately shocked to hear the number of jurors that were being mobilized for this selection process. You know, 600 the first week, 400 the second week, 1,000 people as needed. Um, and I think that that's not a surprise because if you live in this community, 
it's going to be hard to find somebody who hasn't been touched deeply by these events. The news that's been reported on them, um, the, the people we have connections with. I, I know folks who have had pre-existing friendships with the Arbery family in some cases, or the McMichael family in some cases, or the justice system and the officers that were involved. I mean, th there's lots of people that have touched this in personal ways. And then there's just the community the touch that when it happens in your backyard, um, you sit up and pay attention and you're reading the news and you're on social media. So you're seeing the comments and you're seeing the video when it came out. I can only imagine how hard it is to find people in this community who don't have an opinion formed yet, because I think it's so natural that we would. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not surprised at how long it's taking. And I, I think we're all hopeful they will get what they need to have a fair seated jury to see this trial through. Fairness, we're just gonna have to wait to see if that's even possible because I'm sure you're paying attention like everyone else. A lot of the people that are actually being pushed forward of the 36, a good majority are saying they know the key players within uh, th this case. So you're wondering, can it really be fair? Can it really be impartial? But uh, legal experts will tell you they're, they're doing as the best they can, asking certain questions to make sure that those who are finally seated, the 12 jurors, four alternates, really are impartial. They plan to listen to all of the evidence in this case and, and make this a fair trial, fair and just trial. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. Folks, it is now 8.22. Um, in about eight minutes, we are expecting court to resume as jury selection continues in the trial of three men accused of the shooting death of Ahmaud Arbery. It is now day seven, week two of this jury selection process. We are slowly inching towards getting the number needed. Uh, right now, they're aiming to get 64 potential jurors uh, seated for the next round of questioning before getting to the 12 that are needed. Father Tom is here with uh, Glenn Clergy for Equity. Father Tom, if folks are just now joining us, I'd like you to please share with us the, the purpose of your group and why you guys decided to, to unify uh, for, the, for this trial. Yeah, well, again, we, we formed up last year, uh, recognizing that our community had some work to do in building relationships. Uh, as I say, there's, there's a couple of different siloed communities here that don't interact very much. Um, mm -hmm. there, there are bubbles where there are mostly white people and there's bubbles where there's mostly black people and not always mixing the way that you might want in a healthy community at its best. And so the clergy came together and we said, okay, we're gonna work on this ourselves. If we can name that it's an issue, how many of us have lasting friendships with people who are different than we are? Well, let's start forming those. Let's start to get to know each other and then let's use that to branch out into our communities and our congregations, because many of us serve congregations that are not diverse. They serve one kind of racial makeup in a lot of cases. Uh, that's not true of every congregation in this county, but there's a lot of separation on Sunday morning, as we know, all across the country. So we formed that group to build these relationships and out of those conversations, out of that relationship building, we discovered a shared sense that we needed a presence to be uh, messages of peace and justice and unity uh, to, to build off of the best of our traditions that call us to those things and affect whatever change, however small it may be in our community throughout this process. Yeah, and, and Father Tom, you mentioned as well the, these bubbles within this community because we are well aware of that within Glynn County, not just Glynn County, all throughout the nation. There is a lot of um, segregation still. Let's, let's be honest about that. But there is still an overall theme that you're getting from people, everyone that you're talking with regardless of, of race, creed, religion, they're all looking for justice in the end. Yes, and uh, as we said earlier, I, the, the, most of the people that we've talked to are certainly, uh, we're hearing people thinking that yes, these men committed murder and they need to be held accountable for that. I, I know there are others who think that they should be uh, acquitted and, and set free, but the community has largely been lining up around the side of last year, let's arrest these men and get the justice system to do its work. Um, I think you saw just as the state of Georgia, this, this death led to changing the law around some of the things that are at issue in this case. That speaks to um, just how much it's been impactful across a wide array of people and political spectrums. Um, and so, yeah, you know, we've, we've seen a, a diverse support for this process and not an, a process filled with animosity or, or hatred. We're just not seeing that here. Yeah. You, you mentioned law being changed. We were talking about the citizen's arrest law in particular, um, something pretty much a vote of contention for a lot of people, something that has been in place since the 1800s that people say needs to be changed. And, and ultimately it, it was. Um, we even heard an interview with with Wanda Cooper Jones about Arbery's mother, who said it was so heartbreaking to know it took her son's death to finally 
bring about that change, but she's grateful to see that it has changed. So there is some movement, some some slow movement in, in things and in progress in terms of race relations there in um, in Glynn County and Brunswick, Georgia. We're hoping that that trickles down pretty much towards the rest of the nation that the change that we're seeing. Um, Father Tom, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, Father Tom Purdy with Glenn Clergy, a group of about 50 clergymen that have come together there in Glenn, pretty much has set the tone for this trial. They are aiming for peace. So far, things have been peaceful, and they we're praying that it will remain that way. We know that court is set to resume at 8.30 this morning in just a couple of minutes. If you're watching now, just now joining us, you're watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men charged with murder in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery, we know, just 25 years old. He was shot and killed there in Brunswick, Georgia, in the Satilla Shores neighborhood while running through the neighborhood. The three men who are charged right now say they suspected him of being involved in uh, burglaries in that neighborhood, and so they decided to to go after him um, under the citizen's arrest law that was in place at the time. And that is something uh, important to mention because that is going to be brought up throughout the trial time and time again. Um, but folks, we are going to be here throughout the duration of this trial. You'll be able to catch us online here on firstcoastnews.com and of course using that First Coast News app. Again, Father Tom Purdy, we appreciate your time. If there's anything at all you feel the need to add or mention or you want people to know about this trial, where we are now, where we're going moving forward. I think that we are hoping that because the nation is tuning in, that they will see that there are communities that can wrestle with these issues of, of race and uh, poverty and all the things that we face here um, and do it in a way that is hopeful and respectful and based in love. And that's really what we're trying to do. And we hope that that does have an effect so other communities that have to deal with their own problems in the future and their own struggles can say, here's a path, maybe this is a path that will work for us. Hope, respect, and love. Some words we'll all need to hold on to um, because we know this trial will have implications all throughout the nation. So we're all waiting to see what will happen. Again, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Folks, we are going to um, tune out right now because the trial is the court rather is set to resume in just about two minutes. You are watching First Coast News' online coverage of the trial of three men charged in the death of Amard Arbery. Thank you again, Father Tom. You have a thank great you, day. Katie. Thank you all.